I wanted to cover a couple miscellaneous topics here about your uh, your motor order. Um, these are four and one um, four and one motors, one third through one sixth, meaning that if you have uh, if your unit uses a one sixth horsepower or a one fifth horsepower or a one quarter horsepower or one third, and let's say it's 1075 RPM, then uh, you, you would order your multi, your four and one 1075 RPM. Or if you have the 825 RPM, then you would order the 825 RPM. And it doesn't matter which of these horsepowers uh, that you happen to have. If, if when you order your, if you have, let's say you have a one quarter horsepower um, motor and it's 1075 RPM, you would order the four and one 1075. And, and you would be covered if you had, of course, the 825 RPM and let's say one fifth horsepower, then you would order the 4 and 1 825. Um, I also supply with you some written instructions, and what's really handy is those, uh, those diagrams like we talked about, where you have the little capacitor, you have your old motor, and uh, then you got to try and sort out what of, which of these wires we have, and you, this is something you could just take up on the roof and that way or outside with you and, and you can look at it while you're looking at the unit and then uh, that way you don't have to try to memorize the video or whatever and this is the setup where you have the dual capacitor and you have your little terminals in there mark you know hermetic common fan and it, you have these little bubbles that tell you you know this is the fan uh, terminal whatever and you can find your appropriate wires and, and hook up your new motor with, without any trouble so uh, the next thing I want to tell you about is uh, these little drain plugs uh, you have on the top and on the bottom a little red plug now 99 not probably 95 percent of the time the motor mounts with the shaft pointed down so if that were the case in your unit you would then remove this little red plug right here and the reason you do that is so that if any water condenses inside the motor, it, it has a place where it can drain out. Because the motor is pretty much watertight. Um, some moisture can accumulate in it if you live in a real super humid climate. But um, that's why you have your little condensation drain. And of course, if you were to mount the uh, motor with the shaft pointed up, then you would want to remove this bottom plug. Um, on the bottom here are some little lock nuts that are already screwed on here so just unscrew these little lock nuts and then mount the motor to your grill and then just uh, you know put the lock nut on the other side or maybe with a washer uh, some grills have holes that are a little bit big and you just put your washer on there to compensate for that and then just use your little lock nut don't try to use the uh, the nuts like you might have had uh, on your old motor a bigger nut that came off here and so you say, well, this nut's bigger, it looks a little better. I would advise against it because uh, these threads are really fine. And um, the thread that's on this motor may not match exactly the thread that's on your old motor. And so what will end up happening is it might end up coming loose on you. So I would advise that you use the uh, lock nuts that come on it. And just, uh, just discard the other nuts with your old motor. Um, when the motor comes from the manufacturer, it comes with a, a long shaft like this. What I do, I found that about uh, at least 95% of the time, you don't need a shaft this long. And so I pre-trim these shafts for you because I, I have a portable bandsaw and I cut them off in just a few seconds. And I also remove these little uh, bolts that stick out here on the front which which I've never in my life seen a unit that uses these little bolts to mount the uh, fan motor so I just remove those also um, but you can specify that you want your motor to come with the long shaft and you know intact and whatever exactly the way it comes from the manufacturer I just cut this shaft just as a service to my customers and in most cases uh, you would probably want to cut the shaft anyway when you put the uh, when you put your fan blade on, it would you, you put it on here and leave a little bit of space underneath. In most applications, especially with the shaft pointed down, you're going to want to you're going to want to put the fan blade as close as practical 
to the to the body of this motor, but I leave at least a half inch right here. And the reason you do that is because you remember how I grabbed it from underneath with the channel locks. If you ever need to remove that fan blade again, it's pretty handy to have a little bit of space under there to be able to grab it. So I would definitely leave a, a little bit of space there. And like I said, about a half inch or however wide you think you need a 3 8 7 inch. Just leave a little bit of space. Don't put it like all the way down. And of course when you mount your, uh, after you mounted your motor, you'll have these wires here. Well this will be plugged in, hopefully. Let me plug that in real quick. You have this deal here. This is to reverse the motor. And you can see that it, it, it's long enough to where it would hang down and possibly hit the fan blade. So just take a couple of your zip ties and zip tie it to the top of the grill so that it's not going to fall in there and cause any trouble. And then most of the time, your wires right here will route through a, a little tube or a piece of conduit or something to go back to the control box. So you'll just want to route them through there. If it's the case that you don't have a, a little tube like that, then just uh, zip tie these to the grill also. The point is you don't want to have any wires hanging down inside there that might get into, in, get into trouble. I just want to uh, let you know about one other little thing. You see you have uh, your motor spins real freely and on this one I don't know if you can hear that on the camera at all or not. But what's happening is this little rain guard got pushed down and it's rubbing against the motor and it's not really going to hurt anything but when you turn it on it's going to make a really annoying sound so the way I found the easy way to get them to move up is first put a little tiny screwdriver underneath and then a little bit bigger one and then just pry it up a little bit and give it a spin and then that'll push that rain guard up the shaft just you know a fraction of an inch so it doesn't rub on the on the body of the motor like that like I said, it does make a really annoying sound if, if, you've, if that thing is rubbing on there. Now next I wanted to talk about uh, motor bearings. It doesn't sound that exciting, but it makes a difference when you're replacing a fan motor. Um, most motors have what they call a sleeve bearing. And what that is, is basically you have a, a pipe here. I don't know how good I can draw it. And then you have your shaft that sticks out. And all along this pipe inside here, the shaft spins inside there. And all along there, you have contact points all throughout this sleeve bearing. Everywhere that that shaft touches, it, it touches the bearing on every side. And what, that is, what, that, what happens with that is it causes a lot of friction. And these bearings tend to uh, wear out pretty prematurely and um, it's kind of an inferior bearing. If you if you speak to someone that knows uh, a little bit about cars and whatnot, they'll they'll tell you that uh, ball bearings are far superior. Uh, with a ball bearing you have your round pipe sleeve whatever and you have your shaft inside and then you have little ball bearings inside that separate the uh, shaft from the sleeve. And so what this does is you only have a little tiny contact point between the bearing and the sleeve and so this generates a lot less friction and these bearings tend to last uh, a whole lot longer than a sleeve bearing might. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about was, was temperature. On, on every motor you'll see a temperature. It might say for example 60 degrees A and B and a and B stands for ambient, which uh, basically ambient means the temperature that um, the motor is going to operate in. So 60 degrees Celsius would be 140 degrees Fahrenheit. And so that motor that says 60, 60 degrees Celsius is designed to operate at 140 degrees Fahrenheit. So when you have your condenser that sits out there on the side of your house or if you have a rooftop unit it's the same deal you have your little motor that sits inside here and the little shaft and the fan blade and 
what, what this motor is doing is it's sucking air in from outside, just the outside air, and whatever temperature that air is, let's say it's 100 degrees, and it goes through this condenser coil, and when it does, it removes the heat from this condensing coil because this condenser coil gets hot. So that'll add anywhere from uh, 15 to 30 degrees to the temperature of the air. So this air right now, right here, is, is let's say it's 130 degrees. And then that 130 degree air is going to blow over your motor and then get exhausted out through the top of the unit. And what this means is you have your motor designed to operate at 140 degrees and you have 130 degrees going over it. Well, in that case, you're going to be doing all right. But on an exceptionally hot day, let's say uh, you lived in Dallas where they had a, a spell there where the temperature was 110 degrees, 112 degrees. Um, that's going to put you at an ambient temperature of 140 degrees or maybe 142 degrees. If you exceed the temperature that the motor was designed to operate at and now you have, instead of 130 degree air, let's say you have 142 degrees of air going over this, uh, this motor, then what that's going to do is, is the motor is designed to operate at 140 degrees and it doesn't sound like, it sounds like I'm kind of splitting hairs here a little bit, but these days engineers, they, they design things with, with uh, five millionths of an inch of varnish on a winding or whatever, and they know exactly uh, what the design temperature of that motor is. And if you exceed it, every time you exceed it, then that puts a lot of wear on it. And that's why a lot of motors wear out prematurely. So if you had uh, your heat master motor, which is 70 degrees Celsius or 158 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, you would still be in the safe zone. Even in Phoenix, when the temperature, when this temperature is 120 degrees, and that means that this temperature, we add 30 degrees to it, this temperature would be 150 degrees you still have eight degrees of, of uh, safe operating temperature in between what the motor was designed to operate at and what it actually is operating at. So that makes a big difference in, in how long the motor lasts. Um, being a contractor myself, I, I've, I've tried a lot of different motors over the years and the reason that I like selling these motors and these are the only motors that I would install if I was doing a motor replacement myself uh, is because I put these motors in and then I walk away and I know I don't have to worry about it again. I'm not going to have uh, some irate customer calling me and saying, hey, you know, you put this motor in just barely six months ago and now, you know, it's not working. Uh, I don't want to hear anything like that. I want everyone to be happy. So uh, I found it does cost a few more dollars to, to get um, the higher quality motor, but it, it's well worth the price because that way you put it in, you don't have to worry about it. Also, um, they, these Aerosmith Heatmaster motors have really the, by far the best warranty in the business because they, they're warrantied for three years. And all your other motors that are uh, sold by various air conditioning supply companies are only warrantied for one year. So that tells me that uh, the manufacturer has confidence in the motor because they warranty it for three years. And they wouldn't do that if they thought they were going to actually have to you know give someone a free motor so the way they figure it their motor is going to last at least three years and that's a lot better than lasting one year and if, if uh, you end up paying a few dollars more and have your motor last three or four times as long well uh, in my in my humble opinion that's just a uh, good economical sense